How to Land an Aircraft In War Thunder Air Realistic Battle A game of air realistic battle is made up of four phases. 1. Climb 2. Merge 3. Dogfight and 4. The Clean Up The last phase may require you to land, rearm and repair. So how do you land an aircraft in air realistic battle? As Chuck Yeager said, if you can take off again after a 30 second repair, it is a good landing. If you can log in and fly the aircraft the next day without paying Silver Lion repair costs, it is an outstanding landing. How to land a Spitfire, or any aircraft with a propeller engine, really? Reduce throttle to under 10%, or even down to zero. The goal here is to reduce thrust, so you can wash off speed. If you are coming into the airfield too fast, a quick way to reduce your speed is to turn from side to side, until you are at about 250 km an hour indicated airspeed. Drop your landing flaps and landing gear. This will reduce your speed further. Be careful with aircraft like the Spitfire and Yak which has a low rip speed for flaps. A flap breaking off at this speed and altitude can spin you into the ground. When your flaps are fully down, increase engine to around 50% thrust. This will keep you speed stable around 220 km an hour. Once you touch down, use your elevator to keep your tail down, hit the brakes, and wash off more speed by moving the rudder from side to side. Ground loops are encouraged in War Thunder, as they are a quick way to get eliminate any forward speed and get your aircraft repairing and rearming sooner. This strategy for landing extends to all aircraft. How to land a four-engined bomber. The process is similar to landing a single-engined fighter, however, to wash off speed, instead of the tight turns from side to side, use wider turns which put less stress on the big bomber. Four-engined bombers have big, really big, really really big wings. These provide a goodly amount of lift in level flight, but less so in a tight turn. Wider turns are safer and less likely to have the bomber fall out of the sky. Bombers have large flaps which makes them stable at low speeds in horizontal flight. Often you can use the weight of the bomber when it descends to keep the speed above a stall. Despite their weight, you often have to use the elevator to keep the tail down as you press the brakes. Bombers do not really have a place in the air realistic battle meta, and are usually cannon fodder. But if you do survive the initial bombing run, Landing a bomber can be a fun challenge. How to land an aircraft with tricycle landing gear. In World War I, aircraft had a piece of metal at the tail to keep the fuselage off the ground. Since they operated off grass airfields, this was not a big deal. Tail wheels were added to aircraft as they operated more and more off tarmac. A downside of the tailwheel configuration was that pilots had a hard time seeing over the nose during approach and touchdown, famous in the Corsair with carrier landings. Another disadvantage was that the plane could nose over and damage the propeller. Tricycle landing gear solved these problems. The aircraft's approach is at the same attitude as when it lands, giving the pilot good visibility at all times, and, no matter how hard the pilot stamped on the brakes, that aircraft would not tip over. The main advantage in War Thunder is that you can hit the brake button immediately on landing, without having to worry about elevator. That is the only difference when landing an aircraft with tricycle configuration. How to land an aircraft with a jet engine and air brake. Jet engines increased thrust available to aircraft. They also deleted the propeller, which was a big element of drag. Aircraft became faster, more streamlined, and able to maintain their speed more easily. This also made slowing down harder. Engineers added an air brake to increase drag. When landing a jet in War Thunder, throttle down to below 5% if not zero, and press the air brake key. If you need to wash more speed off, turn from side to side like you would in a propeller plane. Jet aircraft tend to have very tough landing gear because of the forces and weights involved. As a result, once under 400 km an hour, lower the landing gear and flaps. Increase throttle as necessary to keep the jet above stall and on a consistent glide path to the landing strip. When you touch down, press the brake. Nearly every jet is a tricycle configuration. Cough, supermarine attacker, cough. So slam on those brakes and put your co-pilot through the front window. Later jets have drogue parachutes. In the game this will deploy when you press the brake key. The award for the weirdest air brake has to go to the Blackburn Buccaneer. 
This air brake was designed by H.R. Geiger, and was later the inspiration for the monster in the movie Aliens. To this day, ghosts of aircraft fitters on the HMS Ark Royal can be heard to whisper, nuke the carrier from orbit, it is the only way to be sure. How to land a biplane? War Thunder has biplanes from the Spanish Civil War, which have powerful engines in the 600 horsepower category. The reason biplanes and triplanes were the common configuration in World War I was that it provided twice as much lift as a monoplane configuration at the low speeds the heavy and inefficient engines allowed. In World War I, most fighter aircraft were powered by engines around 180 horsepower. Your mumsy laughs at the Red Baron in her 300 horsepower grocery getter. Lots of lift also means hard get down on the ground. Biplanes have to have almost zero speed for the tail skid to touch the ground. Be prepared to do several touch and goes before you get the speed right and are able to do a three point landing. An advantage of the biplanes in the game is that they do not have retractable landing gear, so you do not have to worry about that. They also do not have landing flaps, other than the later Gladiator. So you don't have to worry about that either. In fact, biplanes are simple and rudimentary, but you can crater them into the ground, and for less than 1000 silver lions, be flying the very next day. Amazingly rugged, and jolly cheap. How to land a seaplane. The entire point of a flying boat or float plane is, to, well, land and take off from water. In War Thunder Air realistic battle, you will have very few opportunities to do so, and where you can touch down on the ocean, you will not be able to repair. Fortunately, you can crash land a seaplane gently enough that you will repair. The way to do this is the same as any other prop, however, treat it as a slow belly landing. Get as slow as you can before the float touches the airfield. Grit your teeth as you grind your way to a stop. Once repaired you will start above the airfield, skipping that whole inconvenient takeoff step, since you lack landing gear, water, and other modern conveniences. How to land a rocket that sheds its landing gear on takeoff? The ME-163 should never have been put into service. It is a flying bomb that pilots have to gently crash land, as it leaves the dolly its wheels are attached to, on the airfield when it takes off. When pilots are not being dissolved by rocket fuel leaks, they are compressing their spines, landing the plane on its metal skid. Landing a Comet is the same as a float plane, get as slow as you can, and grit your teeth as you slide to a stop, hoping you can repair the damage. How to land the ME-264 This is the hardest aircraft to land in the game. It absolutely refuses to slow down due to its own drag, even with all four propellers at zero throttle and acting as air brakes, even with the bomber in a 90 degree climb, even then, the ME-264 will not shed speed, it will crater into the earth, and not stop, until it has broken down to its constituent parts in the earth's molten core. You will often find yourself running out of time before the airfield, and will hurriedly drop flaps and landing gear, only to see them violently break off, falling to earth like the fluttering ego of a certain Luftwaffe commander. Landing the ME-264 is the same as other four-engined bombers, though you need to give yourself more time to slow the aircraft down, and get it below 300 km an hour. The aircraft has long spindly wings which do not respond well to inputs, so you will find yourself overcorrecting, wobbling from one axis to another. Gentle inputs are the best way to get the aircraft lined up. Around 250 km an hour you can increase throttle to stabilize your forward velocity, and drop the flaps and landing gear. Once you have the ME-264 in level flight, with flaps and landing gear down, it lands like any other aircraft in the game. The hard part is getting it from high speed flight to landing attitude. In stable landing attitude the descent can be controlled with throttle inputs. Comparatively, the ME-264 has a high wing loading. This metric is the mass of the aircraft, divided by its wing area. Generally, an aircraft will fly faster with high wing loading, but have a higher stall speed and landing speed. It will also be less maneuverability. If this sounds like how the ME-264 behaves in-game, its wing loading is why. Wing loading is a design choice. The ME-264 was meeting a requirement for a long-range bomber and reconnaissance aircraft that could fly from bases in France to the United States. A higher wing loading allows for higher cruising speeds, which helped a bomber cover the 6,000 kilometers from France to New York and the 6,000 kilometers back, not that it ever did. 
The most capable long-range bomber of the war was the G4M Betty, with an operational range of 3,000 kilometers. The United States was safe from German strategic bombing. How should you land aircraft in War Thunder? Thankfully landing an aircraft in the game is a repeatable process. 1. Wash off speed. You can do this by turning from side to side at low throttle, or using an air brake. 2. Drop flaps and landing gear. 3. Increase throttle to maintain a consistent landing speed. 4. Touch down. 5. Repair, rearm, and take off. 6. Activate an Avenger or Blind Hunt. Be disappointed that the last player has climbed to space. Ground pound light pillboxes to bleed tickets. 7. Profit, 